This video will show you how Lewis diagrams can be used to illustrate the formation of ionic and covalent compounds from their elements. First, we'll consider the ionic compound, strontium fluoride. Strontium is in group 2, so it has two valence electrons. So we can represent a neutral strontium atom like this. Fluorine is in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. We'll add a fluorine atom here, showing its seven valence electrons in green. You can see it has three lone pairs and one unpaired electron. Notice that the fluorine atom only needs to gain one electron to form a stable octet, but the strontium atom must lose two electrons to form a stable ion. So what we can do is add another fluorine atom over here on the left. Now because strontium is a metal and fluorine is a nonmetal, strontium fluoride will be an ionic compound. In an ionic compound, electrons are transferred from the metal to the nonmetal atoms. They are not shared. So let's see what happens. Strontium's two valence electrons, shown here in red, have been transferred to the fluorine atoms. So the strontium atom has lost two electrons, so it will become a cation. Therefore, we'll draw square brackets around it, and because it lost two electrons, its net charge will be positive two. So we write two plus here on the top right. Looking at this fluorine, it has gained one electron, so it has formed an anion with a charge of negative one. So we draw a square bracket around it and give it a negative charge. It is now called a fluoride ion rather than a fluorine atom. We do exactly the same thing to the other fluorine, adding a square bracket and a negative charge. So this is our Lewis diagram for strontium fluoride. Notice each fluoride ion has a stable octet, and the strontium ion has no valence electrons left. We can see that there are two fluoride ions for each strontium ion, so the formula for the compound strontium fluoride would be SRF2. Now we'll do another example. This time we'll draw the Lewis diagram for the ionic compound potassium sulfide. We'll look up potassium and we see that it's in group 1, so it has one valence electron. We'll show a potassium atom and its one valence electron here. Looking up sulfur, we see that it is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. So we write the Lewis diagram for a sulfur atom here. The six valence electrons are arranged so it has two lone pairs and two unpaired electrons. The unpaired electrons are at right angles to each other. Notice that sulfur needs to gain two electrons in order to form a stable octet. But a potassium atom only has one valence electron it can lose to form a stable ion. So we add another potassium atom on the right, like this. This time we'll show its valence electron on the left of the symbol. Remember it doesn't matter where we show the valence electron around the atom. Potassium is a metal and sulfur is a nonmetal. So the compound formed from potassium and sulfur will definitely be ionic. So electrons will be transferred and not shared between atoms. So let's see what happens. This is what we get. Each potassium atom has lost one electron. So they will both form a positive one potassium cation like this. And the sulfur has gained two electrons so it will form a sulfide anion with a negative two charge like this. So now we have completed the Lewis diagram for the ionic compound potassium sulfide. Note that the three ions shown in this diagram are separate from one another and the two valence electrons have been completely transferred from the potassium atoms to the sulfur atom to form two potassium ions and one sulfide ion. Notice that there are two potassium ions for every sulfide ion. So the formula for the compound potassium sulfide is K2S. So far in this video, we've looked at ionic compounds. Lewis diagrams can also be used to show the formation of covalent compounds. In this example, we'll show how the covalent compound hydrogen selenide is formed. Hydrogen has one valence electron. It can either lose this electron and form an H plus ion, 
or it can share this electron with another element and form a covalent bond. When hydrogen forms a compound with selenium, the compound in gaseous form is found to be covalent. So in this case, hydrogen shares its valence electron rather than losing it. So we'll show a hydrogen atom with one valence electron here. The other element, selenium, is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. We'll show a selenium atom with six valence electrons here. Because the compound formed from hydrogen and selenium is covalent, the valence electron on this hydrogen atom will be shared rather than lost. A selenium atom must acquire two electrons to form a stable octet. In order to get two electrons, it will need to react with two hydrogen atoms. So we'll show another hydrogen atom down here with its one valence electron. When a covalent compound forms, entire atoms move, not just their electrons. So the two hydrogen atoms will move toward the selenium atom, bringing their valence electrons with them, like this. And this is what we get. Notice that these two pairs of electrons are shared between the selenium and hydrogen atoms. The sharing of a pair of valence electrons between two atoms forms what is called a covalent bond. So we have two covalent bonds in this molecule. Now the selenium atom feels like it's surrounded by eight valence electrons. So we say that selenium has a stable octet. We can see now that both hydrogens feel like they have a pair of electrons in their valence shell. So they are stable, like the noble gas helium. The name of the compound formed is hydrogen selenide. So this is the Lewis diagram for hydrogen selenide. When a Lewis diagram for a covalent compound is drawn, shared pairs of electrons can be replaced by lines, like this. Each one of these lines is called a single covalent bond. Remember, a single covalent bond represents a shared pair of electrons in a molecule. So both of these are acceptable Lewis diagrams for the covalent compound hydrogen selenide. Remember a solid line drawn between two atoms represents a covalent bond or a shared pair of electrons. Notice the selenium atom has two lone pairs of electrons, one on the left side and one on the top. In this example, we'll see how Lewis diagrams can be used to show how the covalent compound of phosphorus and chlorine forms. The compound is called phosphorus trichloride. You will soon see why this name is used. If we locate phosphorus on the periodic table, we see that it's in group 15, so it has five valence electrons. We'll draw its Lewis diagram here. It has one lone pair and three unpaired electrons. Locating chlorine on the periodic table, we find it's in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. So we'll add a chlorine atom with seven valence electrons shown in green. Notice the chlorine atom has three lone pairs and one unpaired electron shown here. Because a phosphorus atom has three unpaired electrons, it will need to bond with three chlorine atoms. So we can start with one phosphorus atom and three chlorine atoms like this. Watch as they move together. So we end up with this. Notice this molecule has one phosphorus atom and three chlorine atoms. So its formula is PCl3. And its name is phosphorus trichloride. You'll learn more about the details of naming later in the chemistry unit of Science 10. Because electrons between the atoms are shared, the phosphorus atom feels eight electrons around it. So it has a stable octet and each chlorine atom also has a stable octet. There are three covalent bonds, and in each one, a pair of electrons is shared. These shared electron pairs can be replaced by single lines, like this. So these are both correct ways of showing the Lewis diagram of phosphorus trichloride, PCl3. So far, all the covalent bonds we've looked at have involved the sharing of two electrons, or one electron pair. Sometimes atoms share more than one pair of electrons. An example is the element oxygen. It's one of the diatomic elements. 
which means it has two atoms per molecule, so its formula is O2. Oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. We're accustomed to seeing oxygen's Lewis diagram like this. We can see that an oxygen has two unpaired electrons. This one also has two unpaired electrons. What we can do is imagine the electrons are arranged like this. Now be aware that these arrangements are only imaginary. These are not actual positions of the electrons in the atom. This is just a way to help us visualize how a molecule of O2 could form. So we'll see what happens now as these two oxygen atoms approach each other. We end up with this. With the four valence electrons being shared, this oxygen now feels eight electrons around it, so it has a stable octet. This oxygen atom also feels eight electrons around it, so it also has a stable octet. In this molecule, the oxygen atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons rather than just one pair. So this is one way of writing the Lewis diagram for the oxygen molecule, O2. As we saw before in a Lewis diagram, we can replace a shared pair of electrons with a line. Here there are two shared pairs and each one is replaced by a line. So there are two parallel lines like this. This is called a double covalent bond or simply a double bond. So these are both correct ways of drawing the Lewis diagram for the diatomic oxygen molecule, O2. Another common diatomic element is nitrogen, N2. Nitrogen is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons, which are shown here in these two nitrogen atoms. Each one has a lone pair, and each one has three unpaired electrons. We can create this imaginary arrangement of electrons and then move these together. And we're left with this. This is one way of drawing the Lewis diagram for a molecule of diatomic nitrogen, N2. When all the electrons in the middle are shared, the nitrogen atom on the left has four pairs of electrons, or a stable octet. And so does the nitrogen atom on the right. This time, three pairs of electrons are shared between the two nitrogen atoms. So we can replace each shared pair with a line. So now we have three parallel lines between the nitrogen atoms, like this. This represents a triple covalent bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Sometimes it's just called a triple bond. A triple covalent bond is very strong. This explains why nitrogen gas is very unreactive and stable. About 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen, or N2, but we hardly notice it. Because the bond between N atoms is very strong, it will not break very easily. So nitrogen gas does not take place in many chemical reactions at room temperature. So these are two correct ways of drawing a Lewis diagram for a diatomic molecule of nitrogen and two.